Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is August 13th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This first article I have up, and the news I'll be covering in this first video will be uh, the Middle East, a um, little bit of Asia, and even a tiny bit of Venezuela news. So, this first article I have up is all about Al-Qaeda, because the mainstream media is just now admitting that Al-Qaeda is over there and basically is the bulk of the, quote, peaceful activists that are... Um, uh, basically executing civilians and, and, and wreaking havoc over there. So it says here, Al-Qaeda flags fly over rebel-held Syria. So there's been uh, some small stir in American media as media organizations from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, to the AP have finally gotten around to acknowledging a, quote, presence of Al-Qaeda and like-minded jihadist groups among the Syrian rebel forces seeking to topple the government of al-Assad. So the uh, writers of the Asian Times... I go on to say, it's difficult to see what the cause of the excitement really is. After all, such a presence has been blindingly obvious for months, whether as a result of the dozens of suicide attacks that have plagued Syria or the numerous videos that have emerged showing rebel forces or supporters proudly displaying the distinctive black flag of Al-Qaeda. So, many of you probably remember uh, this same thing happening in Libya with the Al-Qaeda flag flying high. But observations made by a German journalist uh, during a recent visit to rebel-controlled towns near Aleppo suggested that there's uh, no mere presence of jihadists. It says here that the real question is whether there's a presence of anything else. The report, which appeared in the leading German uh, newspapers and sources, also provides evidence that rebel authorities are subjecting civilians to arbitrary detention and torture and similar, um, summarily uh, executing captured members of the regular Syrian armed forces. So you can go through and uh, check out the rest of this article. It goes through some of the uh, incidences that ha are going on over there where the people are uh, literally scared shitless. Like this one uh, guy who had a tattoo who was a supporter of Assad and uh, basically it was uh, cut off with a razor blade and he said that he did it himself and basically these guys are being rounded up in these large classrooms and uh, uh, basically tortured and abused until basically they throw support for the free Syrian army so links will be posted in YouTube's video description go check them out next up we have UN designates free Syrian army affiliates as Al Qaeda so US, UK, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Turkey stand accused of state sponsorship of terrorism UN failure to enforce own resolutions will resign their legit legitimacy sorry, and necessitate their expedient removal and replacement with a multipolar system. So I don't know if you remember me covering this before, but it means that the U.S., U.K., NATO, and the Gulf states of Saudi Arabia and Qatar are knowingly and willfully funding, arming, and politically backing designated affiliates of Al-Qaeda, contrary not only to the U.S. and British anti-terror legislation, but contrary to numerous U.N. resolutions as well. Turkey's support for anti-Syria terrorism to backfire. They had an interview Press TV did with Mohammed Mirandi, professor at the University of Tehran, said where they discussed the role of the U.S. Arab Turkish Triangle in arming and supporting Al Qaeda armed gangs in Syria. He says obviously the media has been completely one-sided. He says not only is it the mainstream press, but also online and more investigative websites. But then a pattern emerged. He said every time there would be a UN meeting on Syria. There would be a massacre the day before, which worked very, very well and was very convenient for the so-called rebels. So the fact that the Western media would immediately blame the Syrian government created this atmosphere where extremists could carry out atrocities and know that the blame would be pinned on the government. So it's not only the Western media that's completely biased and providing a one-sided story, but they're also helping atrocities being carried out by blaming the Syrian government for things they have no information about and for basically keeping silent about atrocities carried out by the opponents of the government. So in summary, uh, he says basically it or Turkey's uh, support of Al-Qaeda will most probably uh, backfire. This is my website if you're new to GGN. It's ggnonline.com and on YouTube my channel is ddarko2012 and ddarko2013 is my backup channel. Um, you can subscribe there or if you'd like to help me out you can donate via PayPal right there. And lastly you can follow um, the website by email by putting your email address right there. Okay so Syrian rebels claim shoot down a fighter jet and government disputes the report. Rebel fighters said Monday that they had shot down a MiG-23 jet in eastern Syria and captured the pilot, a claim disputed by the Syrian government which blamed a technical failure for the crash. 
So we know that um, intelligence agencies are arming and equipping these rebels. And it says here, if the rebel assertion is verified, the action would represent a significant improvement in military skills uh, demonstrated by the ragtag fighters and could be a sign that they are receiving more sophisticated weapons from the international sponsors of terrorism, is basically what it is, which now include Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Not now, they've always, so they're just now, the media, mainstream media has no other choice but to admit this, just like that uh, the fact that al-Qaeda is operating uh, in Syria. But just like the downing of the Turkish jet, um, who really knows, right? You don't really know. I mean, even Turkey said that uh, that it didn't even look like it was shot down by by the Syrians. So, so then we have, uh, oh, yeah, and the pilots. Remember the pilots? Uh, they went missing for a long time. And it says here, tunnel full of weapons discovered in Syria capital. So it says here, S Syrian security forces have discovered a tunnel under a house in the capital of Damascus with large amounts of weapons and ammunition stored inside. The Israeli made bombs, night vision goggles, sophisticated telecommunications equipment, and the satellite sender were among the things confiscated. So the Syrian troops also discovered documents detailing insurgents' planned attacks on strategic locations. Stolen medicines were also found in the tunnel. Then on to sanctions. U.S. slaps new sanctions on Syria, extends those against Hezbollah. The U.S. has announced new sanctions Friday against Syria and its supporters focusing on Hezbollah's support for the regime, for the government, and a Syrian oil company for violating U.S. sanctions on Iran. So they said here they sanctioned the refiner Cytrol for selling $36 million of gasoline to Iran in April. So, you know, they're, uh, they're basically associating these guys with terrorists. Uh, Israel right now is trying to get them declared as a terrorist group, Hezbollah. And so they mention that, but what they don't mention that there's actually entire countries and 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 big companies and businesses that have been doing de deals or uh, business, conducting business with Syria and the Syrian government for years, and uh, all of a sudden they're supposed to act as if uh, you know uh, these guys are the devil, and uh, they're not supposed to do business with them because God tells them not to. So. And I think I, you know who I'm talking about when I say God. It says here, U.S. plans to arm Syrian insurgents with missiles, says report. So we're talking just we're just talking about this, right? This uh, sophisticated weapons. And um, then we come across this, which is they're getting armed with uh, freaking missiles. So we have here the mission of the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, uh, in a visit to Turkey was to supply the Syrian insurgents with anti-aircraft equipment and missiles. So while in Istanbul on Saturday... Clinton said they will, or Washington will hasten the end of the Assad regime. The NBC News uh, reported on July 31st that nearly two dozen man pads or man portable air defense systems have been delivered to the insurgents in Syria by Turkey. And then this individual says we need to take joint efforts to prevent a power vacuum from being formed. I believe they're talking about um, Kurdistan or the Kurds and stuff like that. And uh, as a listener pointed out, which is a very good point, is the uh, is the opium trade so you know could be a decent amount of this has to do with uh, opium which Turkey had a a big they were a big player and then it kind of moved north to Afghanistan so maybe they want to get back in the business but either way they were saying that um, and I read about it afterwards that that area uh, Turkey and north of Turkey and that is basically a corridor for uh, opium from all the opium that gets uh, produced the poppy f from the poppy fields to the opium trade, uh, opium that goes to Europe. So, I mean, when it's all said and done, it's always about business, right? CIA allegedly overseeing arms into Syria. Syrian opposition officials say that the CIA is controlling the weapons flown to Syrian insurgents. No, uh, says not one bullet enters Syria without U.S. approval. <laughs> Syrian opposition speaking in Istanbul told the Austrian newspaper. These, remember, they were just saying, they were just crying. They were literally crying, saying that uh, the U.S. is uh, leaving them out to dry. They're basically not helping them enough. Okay, so here you go. The Americans want their rebellion to continue, the terrorists to continue, but they're not uh, allowing enough supplies in to make the Dam make Damascus regime fall. And then we have the Syrian opposition leader calling for a no-fly zone. So this is not really a, you know, a, a big surprise here. So the, the president of the Syrian National Council sounds very official, doesn't it? And remember I said, I believe this is actually based in Turkey. Um, says here that such a move by the international community would show Assad's regime that his opponents around the world are serious. So that's what I'm talking about when I say God. Um, basically, what, the Zionist occupied countries. So... And uh, they're calling for a no-fly zone. So former Secretary of Defense says 
U.S. will probably enforce a no-fly zone and take aggressive, aggressive action over Syria. Sorry. So that was William Cohen, former defense secretary. So yeah, a more visible U.S. role expected in Syria in coming weeks, says Turkey. That could include a no-fly zone along Syria's borders. So they're expecting a, a, a post-Assad government or Syria, talking about getting their regime change that we've been covering here for months now. Turkey and U.S. to create Syria task force, so a post-Assad Syria task force. Yeah, so Turkey and U.S. agreed to accelerate preparations for the fall of Syria's President Assad, creating a formal bilateral team to manage helping the opposition, providing aid to fleeing refugees and planning for worst-case outcomes that include chemical weapons attack. Talking about Turkey, and uh, Kurdistan, Kurdish Spring looming over Near East, so independent Kurdistan won't consider Ankara, Baghdad, or Damascus. It has everything it needs, the oil, the key advantage in the Near uh, East. So maybe that's what it has to do with. They're removing, quote, removing the troops in Afghanistan, and maybe they're just going to shift their drug operations uh, uh, southwards or, you know, towards Turkey and that. But um, who knows? Like I said, who really knows? Qatar offered Syrian ambassador 5.8 million for defection, says report. That's right. Um, says here they offered Syrian counterpart an advance payment of $1 million and a monthly salary of $20,000 over 20 years, trying to convince a diplomat to defect and voice support for the opposition. So, man, that's a big bank right there. Remember, Syrian prime minister defection, another PR stunt. He was only in office since June 2012 for a couple months. And this is just another sign or indicator of the big illusion that's going on in the media as far as the coverage goes. Uh, Foreign-backed armed groups targeting Syrian history as it happened in Iraq. So that's right, large medieval fortified place in the center of old city of Aleppo. It is considered to be one of the oldest and largest castles in the world. That's right, when I looked at Aleppo, when it first started breaking out, it's one of the oldest cities in the world. Use of the Citadel Hill dates back to at least the middle of the 3rd millennium B.C., so... A lot of history there. Massive looting of ancient artifacts underway in Libya. So they happened in Libya, Iraq, now Syria. Don't forget Egypt confirms looting, vandalism, uh, and other antiquity sites. I think I even read something about the Muslims, or not Muslims, but just radical uh, Islamists calling for blowing up the pyramids or some crazy stuff. U.S. Navy ship collides with oil tanker in Gulf. So like many of the comments says, uh, how the hell does this happen? You know, oh, because this is in the Strait of Hormuz, so it probably was meant to happen. Um, you know, they don't make mistakes like this. Like one of the guys said, is there are two golden rules. You know, you don't uh, you don't drift on the bottom, you don't hit bottom, and you don't hit another boat. So, you know, how the heck does something with all this sophisticated um, technology and stuff like that uh, just ram into another boat? Well, it's good. It's good for the economy. It's good for business to drive up oil prices even further, right? Uh, just like the uh, recent Iranians that went down in the water that were, quote, saved by the Americans. Oh, they never said well, how that fire was started, right? So it says here, Iran government criticized over earthquake response. So of all people, the United States is going to go ahead and criticize Iran for their response, uh, basically turn a blind eye to um, the biggest what thing, which is uh, Katrina. So Iran's government faced criticism on Monday over its response to two earthquakes that killed 306 people with complaints of lack of tents. So I know there's usually seismic activity over in Iran, but, um, you know, you have to remember HARP and earthquake-type weapons, weather weapons. Iranians are donating blood to earthquake vic uh, victims, so it says they're coming out in thousands to donate blood uh, for earthquake victims. And Iran was also uh, one of the biggest donators to the Haiti earthquake victims and Japanese earthquake victims, sending shipment after shipment. I think they sent like 20 shipments. Uh, Iran drought part of soft war by West. So, yeah, they actually believe that the drought that's in Iran is being caused by um, uh, the West influencing the climate. So, uh, Iran knows what's going on. Israel's Natiano attempts to shame UN. Saw no reason to visit a country whose government is anti Semitic and openly declares its intention to destroy Israel. This is after Natiano expressed disappointment that Ban Ki moon and the UN would be attending the conference. And, uh, but Iran is very anti Semitic, although they did never said that they were going to blow up the state of Israel that has said that it's illegitimate state. And they also hold the third largest Jewish population besides Israel and the United States. Jews are protected in the Iranian constitution and seat is reserved for a Jew in the Mahilis. So Iran hosts the largest Jewish population of any Muslim majority country. So Isra Israelis are protesting against a possible military strike on Iran. 
And under Israeli orders, the United States warns Europe to prepare for terrorist attacks by the Iranian-backed Hezbollah. So Israel's top court basically pushes forward uh, West Bank Village uh, demolition. An Israeli sniper gets 45 days after shooting two Gaza women carrying a white flag. Hurrah.